Welcome to today's clear lecture about comma usage. I want to talk about commas today, uh, primarily because I noticed a lot of uh, interesting uh, misuses of commas in the writing that I've looked at so far, so I thought it would be good to just kind of go over the basic rules. Uh, a lot of people get confused by comma rules, and this is because commas actually serve two purposes in writing. The first is grammatical and those are the ones we're going to worry about. Um, but commas also serve kind of a, a stylistic purpose, and we are not going to worry about those. So for example, the sentence, after dinner, comma, the men went into the living room. That comma is not grammatical. It's just there to kind of provide a pause in the sentence to um, tell the reader how to read the rhythm of that sentence. Uh, the person who wrote that sentence was uh, humorist James Thurber who was writing, uh, publishing a lot in the New Yorker in the 30s and 40s. And he said that that comma was just giving the men time to push back their chairs and stand up. So, and of course the men he's talking about are the men referred to in the sentence. So it doesn't serve a grammatical purpose, it serves a stylistic purpose, and we're not going to worry about the, the stylistic choices that you might make in your writing today. We're just going to worry about the grammatical choices. Some of you might have heard this advice. Just add commas where I breathe, right? Uh, forget that piece of advice. We're going to go over some simple rules today. Those are the ones I want you to uh, be cognizant of and then hopefully you won't be so confused about <gasps> did I breathe? <gasps> breathe? He's here. Do I need a comma here? I don't want anyone hyperventilating. So we'll just learn the, the simple rules and go from there. So rule number one. Uh, I started with the most difficult first. Um, difficult in the sense that it's not as straightforward as the other rules. Um, and that rule is just that you need to include commas for clarity. In other words, if the commas create meaning in the sentence or change the meaning of the sentence, then you need to think about how you're using them. So consider these couple of sentences from scripture. Uh, Verily I say unto thee, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Or Verily I say unto thee this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Notice that the commas tell us how to read the sentence uh, where I, my paused and so forth changed, but they also change the meaning of the sentence. In the first one, you're in paradise with God today. In the second one, you're just being told that, you know, eventually you can be in paradise. Um, So these are actually, you know, quite significant theological concepts and uh, biblical scholars, you know, go through and, and have knocked down drag out fights about these kinds of things. Uh, does purgatory exist? Well, depending on where you place the commas in that sentence, maybe, maybe not. Um, there was no punctuation in ancient Hebrew. In fact, there wasn't punctuation in most languages until we started printing. Okay, commas are there and other kinds of punctuation to tell us how to read the printed word. Um, but again, just notice how that comma can totally change the meaning of a sentence. The first one, comfort ye my people. The second one, comfort ye my people. So the first one, go comfort people. It's kind of this command, you know, generally speaking, go out and do this thing. Whereas the second one is addressed to those people. So it has a, a translation that's more like, you know, just cheer up, yo. Okay, hopefully you've read that. These are just kind of funny. Uh, but this kind of stuff happens all the time. There's obviously a big difference uh, between let's eat, comma, grandpa, and the previous sentence. Uh, this is from fail blog, and I, this is, They've added an unfortunate comma in this list. Okay, here's one where someone probably failed to proofread accurately and ended up with another unfortunate situation. Okay, we could just go on and on and on making this point. Um, for those of you who are dog lovers out there, uh, no dogs please, 
grammatically this sentence basically says that dogs are not pleasing. Whereas probably what they really mean is they don't want dogs behind the fence and that correctly punctuated would be no dogs comma please. Okay rule number two. This one's a little bit easier, one that most people don't have a lot of problems with. The comma is correct if it can be replaced by the word and or or. Duh. Okay, so most of us can put appropriate commas in this sentence, for example. Mom got bread and milk and candy. So, by a raise of hands, who would put the comma between bread and milk? I can't see you out there, but I assume if you're playing along, everybody raised their hand. Who would put a comma after milk? Again, I can't see you. Um, it doesn't matter whether you raised your hand or not. This is why I've put rule number two into this presentation. Uh, I wanted to just briefly mention something called the Oxford comma or the serial comma. Uh, that comma between milk and and at the end of the list of however many is actually grammatically optional um, and it really will depend on the style guide that you have to use to write. Um, so for example um, the Modern Language Association style guide used to require it, the American Psychological Association or APA style guide doesn't. Um, we aren't going to worry about that for this class. I'm just going to tell you that I won't mark it wrong or, or add a comma either way. So it doesn't matter to me whether you choose to use or not use the serial comma. I wanted you to be aware that there are knockdown drag out fights about this in um, you know, editing circles. Okay, rule number three for joining. Commas are used when two independent clauses, or otherwise known as compound sentences, are joined together using a conjunction. You know what's coming, don't you? Okay, conjunction, junction. So for example, it was my birthday on Saturday, comma, and I got a lot of presents. Pretty straightforward, right? The reason that I am drawing your attention to uh, using commas for joining complete sentences is because in a lot of papers I ended up marking a lot of comma splices so I wanted to talk about what the comma splice is. A comma splice is when you leave out that conjunction. Okay so for example it was my birthday on Saturday comma I got a lot of presents. On both sides of that comma there are grammatically complete sentences. It was my birthday, subject, verb, object. I got a lot of presents. I got, subject, verb, blah, 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 blah. Okay, two grammatically complete sentences. If there is not a conjunction after that comma, then what I have is a comma splice, and that is uh, grammatically incorrect. Okay, um, I wanted to complicate this a little further by telling you that however is not one of these conjunctions. So if we were to say it was my birthday on Saturday, comma, however, comma, I got no presents, that would actually be incorrect. It was my birthday on Saturday, semicolon, however, I got no presents. Okay, so I want to, uh, the first one there is wrong, the second one there is correct. So I want to talk quickly and tangentially about the semicolon. Semicolons are only used to join two complete sentences without a conjunction, as we just did, or to separate phrases in a list uh, in terms where a comma might be confusing. So for example, fares were offered to Corfu, the Greek island, Morocco, Elba, in the Mediterranean, and Paris. You can tell just by my intonation of that sentence where I was trying to make everything between those uh, commas equivalent. Um, that's how we read through a sentence with, with commas, but if you know your geography, you know that actually what that sentence really is trying to convey is something a little more like this. 
fares were offered to Corfu, the Greek island, Morocco, Elba in the Mediterranean, and Paris. So we've got some phrases in there that kind of modify a couple of things on our list. And in order to be clear, we can put uh, semicolons to mark those phrases in our list rather than the commas, which get to be confusing. OK, so uh, just to review, you use a comma and a conjunction when you're combining two complete sentences, or in other words, writing a compound sentence. Uh, if you don't use the conjunction, you can use a semicolon or a period. I mean, you can make them two complete sentences. That's perfectly legitimate. Um, but if you don't include that conjunction and you do use a comma, then you will see this big red CS on your paper where I've marked that's a comma splice. Okay, going on, rule number four, use commas for bracketing. Use commas to mark both ends of a phrase that can be removed from the sentence without changing the meaning of the sentence. Uh, these are also called parenthetical elements. So for example, I am, of course, going steadily nuts because I worry too much about grammar. <laughs> Obviously that uh, sentence makes uh, the same, it has the same meaning rather. If I take out the of course, I'm going steadily nuts means exactly the same thing of, as I am, of course, going steadily nuts. Um, so we uh, surround or bracket that non-essential phrase with commas. Here's another example, Nicholas Nickleby, which is an old Victorian novel by Dickens that you may or may not be familiar with, published in 1839, comma, uses a great many commas. Okay, published in 1839, although it modifies uh, the sentence and gives us a little more information, it doesn't change the meaning of the sentence, Nicholas Nickleby uses a great many commas. Okay, so we bracket it with commas on both sides. Now here's why I wanted to sort of make this point is that um, I ended up adding a lot of second commas <laughs> on a lot of papers. So people were uh, writing things such as, you know, Nicholas Nickleby, comma, published in 1839, but then forgetting that second bracketing comma. These commas come in pairs. Okay, uses a great many commas. Or leaving them out altogether. Um, again, because these are um, parenthetical elements, grammatically they do need to have commas around them. Okay, pretty painless, right? To summarize, we use commas for clarity, for lists, for joining, and for bracketing. Um, here's a little cartoon here just to remember or to remind you or, or maybe empower you a little bit that um, modern American usage is to leave out non-essential commas. So you're probably going to want to err on the side of, um, you know, you want to know when the commas are necessary and then the rest of the time you can probably err on the side of leaving them out and not worry about the different uh, gray areas of stylistic commas unless you really want to go nuts. Um, there are some other instances where you do have to use commas. I didn't uh, cover those in this uh, lecture. They include things like um, coordinate adjectives and contrasting elements, tag phrases, date and location formats, using quotations, that kind of stuff. If you are interested in those rules, um, I highly recommend the work of Lynn Truss. She's very um, humorous uh, writer. <laughs> And she's the uh, the author of the book that I've referred to before, Eat, Shoots, and Leaves. Um, most of my examples in this presentation actually came out of that book. Um, and she will, believe it or not, uh, entertain you as she is teaching you even more wonderful punctuation rules if you so desire. So with that, if you do have questions, you're more than welcome to contact me. And I will see you guys soon. Thanks.